folks, Alex Jones here back live on this 24th day of September 2013. We've got legendary writer and researcher Jim Mars on with us and Tosh Plumley. I didn't introduce properly, by the way. He didn't say this during the break. I was just realizing it. He is one of the incredibly interesting people that testified in 77 before Congressman Frank Church's committee and his select committee on intelligence activities. One of the few times the whole underbelly of the system got blown wide open. Regarding his knowledge of the Kennedy assassination, Plumley testified that their, that, that their assignment was to stop the planned assassination of John F. Kennedy. He's also on record flying guns into Castro and then guns in against him after. He's testified before the Senate Foreign Relations Committee in 1991 about the Iran-Contra arms for drugs missions. And uh, it just continues right there. However, his testimony was classified by the committees on grounds of national security. Senator John Kerry, now Secretary of State, served on the Senate committee. We only got five minutes in this segment, Mr. Plumley. a long segment coming up, but you've got the floor. Repeat what you said about how this works, tying it into Benghazi, because uh, uh, it's on record now, but when you testified, it wasn't. They admit what you said in 77 was true, that, that, that Castro was actually started to kick... But he, uh, well, I mean, tell the story in your own words. Well, okay. Back in my day, in the early days, when I was just first become a pilot, I was a co-pilot, and I worked for various uh, CIA cutout companies out of Miami. Some of them were Regina Air Cargo, Riddle Airlines, uh, Air Mountain States Aviation, blah, 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 and all those things that at that particular time were not known about. They were only known about after what you mentioned, the church committee, when it was blown out of the water, that we were transporting and doing uh, arming uh, a rebel, a little-known rebel who used to be referred to as Castro. Anyway, that was the very early days of 1957 when the rebels came out of the Sierra Madre. They went in and with the help of the M-26-7 Cuban underground, uh, the students of the University of Havana, eventually Batista was overthrown. During that time, we threw many, many guns out of Miami, South Florida, and other places into uh, Cuba in support of Castro. Uh, United Fruit was involved in that. Uh, Wyland of the State Department was involved in that. Guns were being funneled from private sources as well as government sources and to fund him. At the same time, because of the American uh, uh, OAS treaties, we were required by law because uh, Batista was a um, uh, sovereign government, and we were required to fund him the necessary weaponry to eradicate that Cuban rebel that was running around in the mountains of Castro. That was my first influence of gun running. Uh, it was not, that was before the big drug deal. Later, years later, a lot of us guys that uh, were picked up in that through flight plans, fuel receipts, different companies that were later proved to be associated with various agencies of the government were required to be testified, to testify. Some of these people were actually assassinated. Some of them were put in jail for a long time. I decided to go public before the fact, before the fact, in order to protect myself. That, that was, was my smart. Motivation. It was not. It was not. My motivation was not to go out here and get publicity, to write books, or anything else. It was simply to protect myself. I did not protect myself from the Internal Revenue and had to fight them for a number of years because of. Uh, uh, receipts that I had re obtained from those companies, uh, payments that I, that, uh, because it was a cut out secret operation, was not reported to IRS. However, they come down and said I made X number of dollars, and they in turn decided I owed the federal government at that period in time in the 70s something like $55,000. Uh, I carried that for 10 years. Um, but anyway, that's another story in itself. That's what you Back get for doing the these Iran secret programs. Yeah, yeah. No, no, <laughs> so expanding, moving into Iran Contra, then we'll tie it into Benghazi from uh, knowing how these operations work. Okay. After uh, right after I got uh, uh, involved, I had to go back and make a living. I made contact through this uh, uh, Arizona uh, Tri State Drug Task Force with Bruce, Bruce Babbitt was governor at that time, and I started uh, working the drug program through a cutout company with the Organized Crime Task Force in Phoenix, Arizona. I, uh, at that time, documented the flights going in and out of uh, various places, got involved uh, later into the Iran-Contra, the beginning of it in 83, went and told uh, Senator Gary Hart at that time exactly what we were involved with. At that time, uh, we were involved in running guns secretly off the books operation through elements. 
Now, let me clarify, element operating within the CIA. Some elements of CIA did not, did not even know what we were doing. We were referred to as a secret army, a type of Praetorian guard, if, you, if I may. That's on the record. All right, stay there, that, stay there. Uh, amazing information, sir. 18-minute segment coming up. This was a short one. Tosh Plumley is our guest, one of the star witnesses from the Frank Church committee hearings. And uh, you're going to get an inside scoop here on the government flying guns out, drugs in. We'll start over about a minute before we went to break. You were talking about Iran-Contra, when that really started, what happened there, uh, and, and then tie it into what's happening currently from your information on Benghazi. Tosh Plumley. Okay, uh, first off, I want to apologize for Jim Mars for hogging this whole deal. Um, no, 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 Jim can come on any time. He, he, he wanted to get you on. Go ahead. Okay. That's right. Uh, hey, okay, we so wanted anyway, straight, we uh, straight from the horse's mouth. Okay, no, so I'm just well, a reporter. Uh, You're the guy that lived it. Okay, we'll talk about, I'll, I'll talk about me, and then, then later you guys can talk about me. How's that? Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Anyway, we're back up about 1978 through 83, 85. After a business failure because of uh, various things the government did not want to be particularly talking about, and I was threatening to write a book about it, um, I took off and got involved with the Phoenix Organized Crime Detail Task Force and Drug Running. I later released an article uh, titled I Ran Drugs for Out the Sound that was written by the San Diego Reader in August of 1990 making reference to the 78-83-85 era. I'd also talked to Senator Gary Hart. He was kind enough to write a letter to the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, which detailed these flights and the illegal flights going to um, factions uh, operating uh, in Central America and uh, Southern Mexico. Uh, uh, Tosh, weren't you, fly, weren't you, fly, Tosh, weren't you flying the arms down to John Hull's ranch in Costa Rica? Yes. Yeah. Right, that's yeah. what opened all that up. The Lapinka bombing. Uh, I think uh, Leslie Colburn did an article. I uh, did a book on that in 1987 called "Out of Control." That was the beginning of the un un unraveling uh, after Hawkins Bush and them bailed out, and a good friend of mine got killed in the in the crash down there. That's when the uh, Iran country, uh, uh, Southern Front. I was working on supplying weapons to the Southern Front through a secret air base known as Santa Elena, Costa Rica. Um, and that was known as Point West in uh, Oliver North's notebooks. Um, I had ended up testifying to the Senate Security Committee. I uh, went into detail not only about all of that, but going all the way back to Cuba, Cuba, Kennedy, Contra, and beyond, as I refer to it. And uh, they immediately ended up classifying it because it was a matter of national security and was classified committee sensitive, top secret committee sensitive. That testimony remains so today, and I've been warned not to make reference to it. However, in order to protect myself coming out on the airways today, I am making reference to it. Uh, okay, hey, let me, interject, right? let me interject. I got a C-130. Tosh, if I can interject right here, uh, my, my uh, friend, John, Senator John Cower, was head of that committee investigating Iran-Contra. And although you were muzzled and everybody else was, uh, he was getting ready to write a tell-all book. But then all of a sudden he was conveniently killed in an airplane crash. And uh, his writings were, have never been made public. Well, that's true. Uh, there was, as I made reference, I got a C-130 pulling in here. Hold on a minute. I'm just like can Watch this out. I apologize for this. I can't help you. Okay, while we're waiting on the right. C-130 to come and go. There you go. Okay, now he's not going. He's staying here. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, there, as I made reference to earlier, there was a lot of us guys, uh, or my friends and colleagues, some of them got killed, some of them went to federal prison for a number of years uh, because of the operations that they were involved in. That's the whole reason that I came forward before the fact so that at least I would have it on record uh, through some news media that uh, I was making those allegations. And as I said, Senator Hart was very gracious enough to write a letter to the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, as well as another reporter out of Telluride, Colorado, by the name of Art Goodtime, who also covered that. However, mainstream media was told that they could not cover that because it was a matter of national security at that particular time. That has been going on for a number of years now.
But as far as me getting out to the area of getting involved with the Arizona Tri-State Drug Task Force, which was a cutout operation uh, that was used in order to funnel guns and ammunition uh, into uh, uh, through the John Holmes Ranch, as well as San Elena, Costa Rica, uh, and Sitco Aviation and, uh, and, and Paco Solo and all those places that are now recorded in secret documents as being transshipment points for drugs coming back into the United States and weapons going down. Uh, what I did in the article with the Iran Drugs Council Sam, I released a detailed military map with all the staging areas and all the uh, uh, drop points and all the coded names of the rooster hop operation, and uh, that was all given to Senator Hart, Bill Holden, his security advisor, for the record of to protect me before I went to talk to the Senate. Uh, I released that article to uh, Neil Matthews at the San Diego Reader. He published the map, and they threatened me with going to jail because I had released classified information. However, nothing ever happened to that. Get into, uh, now that we have some background of this, now let's get into Benghazi from, a, from an insider's view. What's going on there? Okay, all right. I was asked sometime, I have to start from Mexico. I, some time ago, about four or five years ago, I was asked by some military friends of mine, high level, secret clearances, uh, to help protect them because, in Mexico because they were aware that there were leaks that was putting their task force in trouble. Almost getting them involved with the cartel, uh, and they were having members of the cartel gunning for them, and we were training troops. That was an article called Boots, U.S. Has Boots on the Ground in Mexico. That was a very top secret task force operation. We were training the Mexican Marinos uh, in um, Mexico, and in the process, the task force found out that the army, the Mexican army, not the navy, but the Army was pilfering weapons and going in and starting the Zeta. And uh, U.S.-made weapons were getting into the Zeta's hands. Now, that was before Brian Terry was killed, a uh, border patrol agent. At that point in time, it got a little bit spooky down there because I went in with them and I photographed the weapon. I photographed the transshipment point. I photographed and worked the border down there for three and a half years with the Border Patrol and also made secret reports back to what was going on through the task force out of Fort Smith, Texas, through the Border Patrol. This was all recorded before the fact with my staff. Now, Toss, just to back you up, everything you're saying is actually, from not from your perspective, but from others, has actually come out in the news that Los Zetas is really a secret army of the Mexican army and that the only group that isn't totally corrupt is the Mexican Navy. That's what my high-level sources have said as well, but it's also come out in federal court. So so sum up the Mexican drug war. Who, who are the parties down there? All right. The various cartels that have been formed, the, the Navy and the task force, the American task force, work with the Navy Marinos. That's the whole deal. In the process of this, they found out weapons, and some of these guys that were in the Mexican Army, as you know, and your sources are absolutely right, they pulled out of the Mexican Army, went in with various cartels, with first in with Zeta and some of the others, the Latrain, Bella Latrain, blah, 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 and all those hundreds of them at that particular time, some out of San Diego, the Gulf, uh, Central, uh, and out of Juarez. Uh, all these cartels and gangs, they were gangs that became known as cartels, but anyway, they were getting these weapons that were going to Mexico from the direct commercial sales program, not being monitored by the Blue Lantern Report. Our news media in the United States refused to take that, uh, that stand. A few news media did cover that, alternative news media. So let's be that clear. Been, uh, let's be clear. We're not just talking about State Department weapons shipments now to Al-Qaeda. We're, we're going back six, seven, eight, nine years ago, arming actual drug cartels, which has also come out in court later. Let me ask you this question, and I've seen this before. If you, ex for your own safety, because people were getting killed that were part of operations in the 50s and 60s, if you went public in the 70s, how are you still, including today, doing work for the military and other groups and, and, and other task forces 
when you've gone public before, is that because there's light side, dark side in government and different compartmentalized areas? All right, that's a very good question, and I explain it this way. Everybody takes pop shots at the CIA. There's an operation within the CIA that the CIA doesn't even know exists. And uh, that doesn't mean it's a rogue operation. That's, uh, what, it, what it is, it means that these operations can have access to our arsenals to take weapons to go into special op uh, operations under the disguise of training troops in foreign countries to defend their borders. As a result of that, filtration uh, in, uh, weapons are uh, stolen out of their arsenal and in some cases actually given to radical groups for, for political purposes to overthrow or destabilize a country. In some cases, we have elements within our government, and I'm sorry to say this, and I'll probably get my ass creamed for doing it, but we fund both sides of the conflict. It's a monetary thing. Again, follow the money. Follow the money. Where does it go? I mean, this is a black, off-the-books operation. Now, there's damn good people in the CIA, and there's damn good people in state, and there's damn good people in the DOJ. But it's also, some of these people's hands are tied because of political whatever, and I'm not going to get into conspiracy or anything like that. That is the fact of the way that it is. Now, back to your question about how I still can stay engaged. I have some very good, deep, sensitive friends that work both sides of that issue. And as a result, when I have to go to them and say, hey, man, my family's starving out here. I need to get aboard a damn airplane. Can you give me a job? Well, Mr. Plumley, you know what the job is. Yeah, put me on board. Now, if I kept that secret, I would be dead by now. The only thing that keeps me alive is the fact that I'm talking to people like you before the fact. Now, elements within that organization that I'm talking about, that secret organization, would like to cream my butt. But also, there's other people in that same organization of the CIA and the State Department and the DOJ that want me to continue to work those operations so that I can get the intel through other sources and my... And I knew that was going to be your answer. <laughs> exactly. So you're a good guy that other good guys on the inside use because there's always a war between good and evil in anything. And that's why good people have to take action. As our founders said, all that evil men need to take over is that good men do nothing. Now... That's absolutely right. Hey, uh, Alex, if I could jump in here. Uh, one of the criticisms that I've heard of, uh, of the article that we posted uh, uh, is that, well, you know, we, we uh, these foreign gangs and foreign governments and, and uh, terrorists, they're, they're using sometimes Chinese weapons, Russian weapons. It's not our weapon, but I think Tosh will verify this. When they, he says they're going into CIA stockpiles and military stockpiles, we stockpile a lot of weapons in this country that we snatch up from other countries. And, oh, no, no, no. Uh, Last we, month they bought 600,000 AK-47s from the Russians, the U.S. Yeah. Army did. Exactly. And also, if you look at all of these billions of rounds that Homeland Security is buying, a lot of that ammunition is in uh, odd uh, calibers, like 44 caliber. 40 it's in caliber. Warsaw. It's in Warsaw Pact. Exactly. These are not for U.S. Army and military and police purposes. Yeah, they're flying around everywhere. Uh, guys, stay there. We got one more segment. We got one more segment. I want to get exclusively into Benghazi then when we come back with Tosh Plumley and have Tosh get anything else that he had not said on the record. Uh, Tosh, um, is, is that what you want to get into when we come back in, in three minutes? Is Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, we, we're, 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 you know, I, I'm trying to follow our lineage coming all the way up, so we're, we're good. Let's go into what brought me forward in modern day, so to speak. Today. Yeah, final segment. You, you'll have the floor when we come back. Just to get it all out there that you want out there for your safety on the other side and for the, uh, the people to know what's really going on with all this. All right, folks, we'll be right back with one of the key whistleblowers of Iran-Contra, but even more importantly, the church committee. That is such an amazing committee. I know you're down at a military base right now, Tosh, but if we could ever get a video camera out to interview you, I'd love to get you on the nightly news and have it 
documented that way. We got six minutes left. You've got the floor. Bring it all in to what you saw, what you know, what you've heard about Benghazi and the cover up that's ongoing. Okay, am I on? We on now? Yes, sir. You're on the air. Okay, all right. Listen, I, I, I'll jump way ahead here. Okay, here a few months ago, I heard a broadcast on uh, one of the, I think it was on well on one of the news channels, and it was a Miss Smith that was begging, begging our government and the State Department and President and Vice President to please let her know what was going on, what happened to her son, how did he die. Why did he die? She begged and begged. She said that they told her at their casket and hugged her and kissed her and told her they'd get to the bottom of all this. All right, that impressed me. Okay, because I know how this system works. Later, I began to wonder, why won't they tell her anything? So then a contact of mine in the Middle East, a high-ranking NATO official, mentioned to me that he had had reports that the ambassador had been complaining about the dispatches and cables that he had sent the State Department about weapons being received in radicals' arms, including Stinger missiles. His question was, where are they coming from? What do I have to do? What should I do? And he was ordered to stand down. Now, this is secondhand information from a very sensitive source. Second time that that happened was from a very good friend of mine that had worked in Mexico Beach in uh, Central America and, uh, and Southern Mexico, and also with Kiki Camarena in 1985, who had also found out about gun smuggling through the Carl Quintero Ranch and uh, got himself killed because of that information. But at any rate, he was telling me the second confirmation that state, I mean, that the ambassadors, people, had written a series of field reports and cable dispatches advising our State Department that the rebel factions had been armed with U.S. weapons. Now, my contention is this. If that is the case, why is that classified as a national security matter? Why can't they tell that woman why and how her son died. That's all she's asking for. Now, okay, if I'm getting on a soapbox, I'm getting on that soapbox. I challenge the State Department to release those memos that the ambassador wrote to them four weeks, two months before the place was attacked. Well, Tosh, let me just stop you. Tosh, let me stop you. I know you're at an airbase right now and got to go soon, but we'll do a little bit of overdrive for five more minutes into the fourth hour if you can do it. I want to be specific. I have Pentagon sources who say, well, I said a week after that that's what happened, that the ambassador, and one of them got threatened and won't even come back on the show for eight months after that happened, that the ambassador was saying no to giving al-Qaeda heat-seeking missiles. And that they had three warehouses full of them. And so they just ordered them all killed using the Benghazi Al-Qaeda security force that Obama had hired. And that this was just trying to wipe out the witnesses of the weapons so they could also then expunge the cables. Is, is that what your NATO source told you? That's what exactly happened. And that is known as a private, corporate, a private company, a security company that was hired. Those weapons were U.S.-made weapons that came from the direct commercial sales program, legally transported by C-130s into Jordan, into Pakistan, into Turkey, and dispatched out of CIA safe houses into the Syrian rebels. Unbelievable. Story. Stay there, sir. Stay there. Back in 60 seconds. This is bombshell. All right, Tosh Plumley, Iran-Contra whistleblower, you name it, flew guns back to Castro under CIA orders. Testified to the church committee, uh, just amazing that he's decided after years to go public and speak out again, still flying aircraft at a U.S. military base right now. Earlier, they fired up a C-130, you could hear it in the background, and uh, he's had down his extended lunch hour uh, there on the cell phone talking to us. William Robert Tosh Plumley, uh, is, he goes by Tosh, is with us. We got 12 minutes left, Jim Mars. Uh, you haven't talked a lot here. Just We're hearing some incredible info, and we told everybody basically this a week after it happened 
from one Pentagon source that came on the air, Colonel Schaefer, who's run black ops all over the world, and then he got in a lot of trouble and said, well, I didn't mean exactly what I said, so he had to retract some things just so he didn't get in too much trouble, but he said what he said, and he knows he said it on air. And then we had, I mean, he said all hell broke loose. And then we were the first to report this, by the way. I'm not bragging, no brag, just fact. It's actually, I wish other people were the first to break this because we've had Saudi Arabian intelligence, that's clearly who it is, messing with my reporters, saying a nice family, you know, videotaping them in the street. We've been getting a lot of death threats of the serious type. They are hopping mad right now, folks. We expose the rebels. We're given chemical weapons by Saudi Arabian intelligence. I mean, we're on the cutting edge of this, so I'm glad other people like Tosh Plumley is going public. But I want Tosh to be able to finish up points and recap what he said. It's historic information here from multiple sources, including a NATO high-level military officer. But And I want Jim Mars to have some final comments here in a moment. But Tosh, from what I've been told, this has finally woken up the entire military. That's why the Joint Chiefs went to Obama and said, you're not going to attack Syria. We're not back in Al-Qaeda. This is over. The military is on the edge of mutiny. The vast majority of military and polls are against it. All the military I talked to knows that they were watching live feeds or talked to friends that saw live feeds from the predators of the six-and-a-half-hour gun battle as they were ordered to stand down. NATO all saw it. Everybody knows it was a hit. So here's my question. Did they pull off security and just let them kill them? Or did they order the Benghazi security, the Al-Qaeda forces, to go kill them to get rid of the witnesses? Did they let them die for a cover-up? Or were they involved in it? Or did your NATO source say anything? And, and, and is my information correct that this has the New World Order in deep trouble because so much of the military now understands how expendable they are? Well, in my, my opinion, they came out here and they tried to turn that into political. In other words, it was a very serious situation that was rapidly developing over there. In other words, the State Department and other uh, agencies refused or did not, re I'm not going to say refused, they did not get back to them in time because they were concerned of how that was going to look politically. It would be a political bombshell if it was revealed that U.S. weapons at that point in time were being given to uh, factions uh, uh, in the Middle East uh, through Turkey, Jordan. It would also expose methods and procedures. It would also expose our CIA safe houses that were operating in Jordan and other places, Pakistan and Turkey uh, and Saudi Arabia. Uh, it would expose those operations that were uh, involved. It would expose our politicians on both sides of the aisle that was involved in corporate gain, in my personal opinion. Uh, so that had to be blocked. We had a military situation that had the military intelligence from that region over there, and it was about to explode. In other words, I think it was turned over in for political, for possible re-election campaigns or whatever the hell was going on at that period in time. Point is, those people got sold out. Her son got killed because of political tampering with a very volatile situation in the Middle East that was about to explode, and it did explode, and it has exploded. So, now, yeah, you're right. I'm going to get myself in a lot of trouble. There's a lot of guys out there. But maybe by me coming forward, you're going to get more confirmation from other people that actually were the boots on the ground that was over there at that time carrying out those covert missions, and they know exactly what happened. And the pilots that threw the guns and the ammunition from our U.S. bases to those areas, hopefully they will come out and get off their butt and come out here and take a risk with me. So basically, Tosh, the hell is going on. you're tired of watching all these people cowardly sit on the sidelines and let this type of stuff go on. So you're, you're telling what you know to try to spur them to go public. They reported two weeks Look, ago that a whole bunch of witnesses Alex, have had their identities changed under White House orders. Those people, I guarantee, are just waiting to be killed. From what I've learned and what Jim Garrison, who I know you know, said, the way to stay alive is to go public. What would you say to witnesses of Benghazi who are out there? I would tell them, go public or you're dead. Well, let me put it this way. I am a civilian. I am not a government employee. If I was a government employee, by the laws that are on the book, it is my responsibility to come forward and tell my superiors and my supervisors exactly what I've been involved in as a government employee. If I suspect that I'm involved in an illegal operation, 
If I suspect that I'm involved in aiding a terrorist group, it is my responsibility as a government employee to report that to my supervisors. Now, in some cases, these men have reported that to their supervisors and their commanding officers. Some of them have gotten killed. One in particular was Colonel James Sabo of the Marine Corps Naval Air Station back in the 90s. He went forward on a gun running operation down to Carl Quintero, Guatemalan guerrillas being trained at a secret base down in Mexico. He got killed for that information. They tried to say it was suicide. Okay, it was not a suicide. It was an outright hit. The people that was involved in that supposed situation, that was an outright hit. They, look, the reason I'm being so adamant is I don't want them one of these black op hits hitting me or my family. So I need the support because I am a civilian. I am not a government employee. I can talk. I don't have to worry about my pension. I don't have to worry about my star. I don't have to worry about am I going to get a new rank for playing ball with the politicians that are taking over the military-industrial complex, my opinion. Does that explain anything, Alex? No, it certainly does. I'm just advising people that have direct knowledge who aren't, haven't already been killed. They're saying a bunch of Benghazi people have changed their identities and will never be seen again. They probably changed their identities like Jimmy Hoffa. Look, most of the <laughs> right. people that do these extreme black ops are working under cutout names. My name was, uh, hell, I, uh, I'm not even going to go into that. That's not important. Mm -hmm. But there is a system out there that is in place that is pilfering and stealing from the American people for profit, for gain, corporations, contractors, uh, people that get out of the military and go to work for a contract and go security, go over and get involved, follow the money, find out where uh, they are going for. Go, go into Gutter, go into uh, uh, Jordan, go into Turkey, go into Pakistan, get these safe houses, bring this stuff forward. And advise the American people. Mainstream media will not touch this kind of information. Number one, it's their responsibility to bury it. Now, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that some of my crews that I'm familiar with will come forward and say, well, this is what I did. But if they do, they will lose their pension and they will have the internal revenue on their ass before sundown. Uh, Alex, if I can jump in here and try to put all this together this this everything we're talking about it ties right into everything that you talk about constantly on Infowars, which is the dark center of the new world order if you will okay or what bill moyers calls the shadow government and at the very center it's the money it's all about the money and who handles the money the international banks the big guys okay uh citibank uh, jp morgan uh, et cetera, et cetera. All right. And then, so these are the, this is the money that is greasing the shadow government, which is actually running the United States, not our elected officials, not the Constitution. And this is why it's so important for this information to get out to everyone so they can start dealing from a position of reality instead of uh, operating with rose-colored glasses in la-la land. And Jim, and, uh, and Jim, it's getting more reckless, and they're using the al-Qaeda threat to take our liberties. These corporations and groups are out of control to the point of the British won't even launch this attack on Syria, knowing it's going to start World War III. These people are out of control, and I salute you and Tosh Plumley. Uh, one minute final comment from you, Jim. One minute final comment from Plumley. Well, mine's real simple. That people have got to wake up, start listening to alternative media, educating themselves so we can turn this country around and go back to the principles of freedom and liberty that it was founded upon. JimMars.com is the website. Okay, uh, Tosh, final comments. My final comment is the reason I'm doing this is I want my country back. I'm a patriot. I'm an American citizen, and I have fought hard all of my life. I'm 76 years old, and it's time to put this shit to bed. <laughs> Amen, brother. Yes, it is time to put this uh, globalist garbage to bed. It is time to turn things around. Things things are getting so crazy, and the criminals are so out of control. We're actually the criminals' best friend because they're going to end up destroying themselves and everybody with them if they don't stop. These people don't know when to quit. 
Well, that's, that's my true. opinion, and uh, back to Mrs. Smith. I hope that, that, that this broadcast will get some people in D.C. off their butt and communicate with that woman and let her know what happened to her son. I think every mother needs to know when their son is lost in battle for the sake of this country and the patronism of this country, they need to know what happened. I agree with you, Tosh. God bless you. We'll talk to you again soon and hopefully get you back up in the next week or so. You too, Jim. Thank you, gentlemen.